Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G Sparrow's Journey, and this is Office Freakout. Yeah, what is Office Freakout? The best description I can get, I suppose, is it's a rage destruction simulator. You are an employee in a company for years and years, supposedly, and you suddenly start freaking out and destroy the whole place. That's the main idea. Office Freakout is made by Hollow Robot, and it's coming out on the 27th of September. Office Freakout is made with Unreal Engine 4, and we're gonna start seeing one big... the first big problem I see with the game, which is very long loadings. Let's start the game and see what it is it like. I see no reason why we would have to wait for so damn long. If we check the art style, which we are seeing right now in this panel, it looks quite decent, and I love it. The game itself, the graphics, it does the job, and there's nothing I can point out in there. I just don't see why that loading would take so long. This is the level select panel, where I can just go and choose whatever level I want to play. You don't exactly have to be successful in a previous level to go on to the next one, even though I cannot choose any right now. I have to play this one to move on forward. But, strangely enough, I have played this one, I skipped to this one and most likely I failed at it, but I was still able to play the next one. I don't know exactly how that works out. Let's try out one of these levels, I'm gonna start by the very first, so that you can get an idea how it all starts and then I will eventually go on to further down levels. Now I know that I have, I have not played that much so there's a lot to explore over here further down the line. But that's just because I don't see any reason to keep playing this game, to keep coming back to this game because it's always the same thing, destroying stuff, getting more points and that doesn't drive me as a player. And here's another example of how the loading times are really, really painful to go through. Even though these tooltips in this art style is pretty awesome, pretty decent. Just gonna let it flow, and there we go, here we are finally. So, this is my top score, I have a 5 minutes limit, so if I, for instance, reach my objective, I will still have some time, eventually, to get more points before getting into the door where I need to get a key to. So eventually, if you see the bar at the bottom of the screen, I need to reach the first objective, which is having the game telling me where is the key to the next section, and then I'll have to get it. Not only you can just do this, punch stuff, non-stop, and keep doing it until you reach the mass ra max rage you can get, but you also have a secondary attack, which I can do with my shift key and then my left click, which is a stronger attack. The more, I guess, I hold it, the more damage it will do, maybe, maybe not. And then finally, you have somewhat scattered around the levels, these items shining, which are special items which you can use, not that, which are special items you can use, for instance, this one I can throw just paper for some reason, and it, do, it will do some sort of more damage than your own punch. Scraps of paper like these ones just completely destroy the office and fulfills your rage bar to the max, almost. So if I do that, look at that! I'm already in rage just because of that scrap of paper. So now the objective is just to try and keep the rage bar all the way up with some dubstep music playing in the background and trying to keep this bar to the max as much as I can for as long as I can. The simple goal right now is to not let that bar go down the threshold from which point you don't longer become enraged. Now, when that lower bar at the bottom of the screen reaches the first objective, finally, the game tells me where is the key to the next section, and then I'll just have to follow the bottom left icon where it tells me the direction, it points out the direction of the key, which should be over here in this computer, hidden inside a computer. I have still three minutes into this level, so if you look at the bottom bar once again, 
you have the secondary objective, and then you have even a further down the line objective. So the more points you get, the more you fill that bar. And the more you fill that bar, the closer you will be from getting the secondary objectives, which is, you know, more score. But I'm really not interested in that right now. I'm just interested in going to the next section. If I did want to do that, I would still have some time to do so. Yeah, baby. We passed this level. I have done it already in the past, so there's really no surprise over here. I'm gonna go and choose to go to the main menu and choose another level which is further down the line. And I don't think I can do it from here. You increase your rank no matter if you play the previous levels or the next levels. Down the line, you also unlock stuff, like the blue theme. So, if you ever want to play with blue chairs or blue computers in the map, you are allowed to do that now, because I got the blue color. You can pretty much pick up everything in the map, and that's one of the things that I really like about the game. Okay, let's destroy that and try to get the range bar. Can pick up a monitor, and can pick up these kind of computers that look like... Uh, you know, those computers from, uh, land parties and whatnot. That look absolutely awesome if you're into that kind of thing. Let's pick up the chair, keep destroying the stuff. I never ever use my strong attack, I don't see any reason to do so. Uh, the game never explains why should you use that one or the simple, faster one. I guess, in my mind, I always should use the fast one because that's the one that gets you things destroyed the faster. I got my bat, let's destroy this computer and we are pretty close to the threshold we need for the game to tell us. Oh, what's that? I don't know because I just destroyed it, unfortunately. I do think that, you know, it it, it delivers a sort of um, skill bar, if that even exists in this game. Having to be careful with the items that will deliver some sort of advantage, you know, if I just go in here and destroy this table, these items that are really good in the game will be destroyed and you won't be able to use these scraps of paper anymore. And I like that you have to be careful with that, but at the same time, I'm always looking forward. It seems that this keyboard is the one that has the key, so let's destroy it and do the... Let's pull a, a German kid movie, uh, move, if you know what I mean. Uh, the one that got famous because he was destroying his keyboard against his table. Uh, let's destroy that, because why not, and let's unlock the elevator and get out of here. It seems that you can even customize your own arm. I see over here unlockables. It seems you can have a skeleton arm, or maybe that will add a tattoo. Uh, I have no idea. Going back, you can also change your weapon of choice. It's just bad that you cannot at least visualize, preview the weapons that you could have further down the line. And these are the ones that you can have. Going back, you can also change the look of uh, things in the map, I suppose. So you can change, for instance, let's see, you can change the cell phone to blue color or red color. It seems that you have even texture. Which, uh, again, it, it's it's really not enough for me to go back and play and try to unlock those things. It, it makes no sense to me that I would go back and try to have those things now in the game. Okay, here are the security guards. They call them security. So, let's punch a couple of them and you can see this is how difficult they are. They are laughable more than anything. If you're really careful, they will never hit you. The only time they will hit you is if they grab you, which is one of their abilities, like that. That guy tried to grab me, but he was not capable of doing it. Now, when you are doing this, and only now I notice, at the bottom bar, there's actually a threshold for the security guards to start showing up. When you're doing this, I don't think you are, you are really increasing your bottom bar, the points, so that's the only problem with these guards, is that they make you waste time on something you shouldn't be wasting time on. Alright, let me try to get in here if I can. No, it seems I can't. This guy was running towards me. That's actually the exit. I don't know if it's possible to get in there. These guys also allow you to get enraged, but they don't really help with the overall score of the game. If you can, I guess it's just better avoiding them. But the thing is, if you allow them to spawn continuously, obviously the map will be filled with these guys and you will struggle with them. And there's another security 
point in the score bar down the line, if you notice at the bottom bar. So we better just punch these guys. There's more spawning, though. I don't really get this. Um, there's more spawning, and I don't understand why, because the next point for the security guards is further down the line. So if you let a lot of them spawn, as you can see, things will become rather difficult. Let me try and... Destroy this guy. Is there a way? Okay, cool. Can get in here. Is there any special items in here? Not really. Okay. Let's try to get to the data center and destroy all of this stuff. Now, when you let a lot of them spawn, like I did, this will eventually happen. And you fail the mission. But uh, if you... If I'm not mistaken, let's test it out really quickly. I'm gonna click next and see if uh, this will skip to the next level or if I will be forced to repeat the level. Alright. The hidden. So it seems that you are allowed to proceed to the next level even though you didn't complete the previous one. I don't know if this is a design flaw or if it is just intended so that you don't become frustrated not being able to complete the previous level. The way it all starts, you being enraged already, there's no people panicking, there's really no... There's nothing that drives me wanting to complete the next level once I complete one. And shortly, it's not going to be a new color for the chairs, or a new texture, or even a new weapon, even though that sounds motivating enough. Not in this game, though. That's not the thing that is going to drive me to proceed to the next level, unfortunately. I'm going to get back to the menu, and let's go through another painful loading time. I always try to look for the good things in a game. This game is... Definitely not the worst on Steam. I've seen far worse on Steam and especially games that shouldn't even be there. I don't think this is the case. There's room for improvements, but I would definitely not be the person that would buy this game or try to enjoy it in any way because I actually don't see any point in continuing playing this game. Getting more levels? Sure, that could be fun. But there's really nothing that drives me. There's no fun doing this over and over again. It feels to me pointless. It feels like it's an empty experience. But if it is your thing, don't let me stop you. This is just my own opinion and just my own personal experience. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Office Freakout coming out on 27th of September made by Hollow Robot. I hope you have enjoyed this video and by all means, once again, don't let me stop you from buying and enjoying this game if you have enjoyed what you've seen in here. I'll see you on the next one. Please have a good day. Bye-bye.